be a barrier to keep us from being targets. Also, all vegetation that you see within 100 yards of camp will need to be cleared so that we may see who approaches camp and most assuredly who tries to leave camp without authority to do so. You volunteered for this. Yeah. Right. yeah but... Behind me before you is a three pound field piece. Can any soldier tell me why this is a three pound field piece? The weight of the cannonball, sorry, we'll find out the end. Very good. The weight of the you round or solid ball shot ball. now that you're in the army. We will no longer refer to it as ball. It is solid or round shot, and it does weigh three pounds. To help illustrate how effective a three pound round or solid shot could be from this piece, if it was moved to the Capitol building and faced west down the Duke of Gloucester Street, you could fire a solid round shot that could cause most distressful situations to the students at the college one mile in distance. You shall catch these in your hands. Do not place them in your nostrils or your mouth, but in each ear. <laughs> and green stripes you should stand on this side of the wheel hub blue stripes on this side of the wheel hub and yellow shirts you stand right here behind this wheel make sure nothing's living inside this and place it on your left hand stand right up there by the wheel hub I'll be right with you to assume that this field piece has just been loaded and fired. To load and fire again can be most hazardous. Why don't you put those in, put these on each arm. And then hold this over to the side, just like that. To load and fire again was hazardous because inside the breech remains part of the sack that housed the gunpowder. Linen or flannel, still smoldering. You want to extract that before loading gunpowder on top of that. And give it two turns to the right. And extract. And take two steps backwards. We've now extracted the largest portion of the sack, but we need to extinguish any embers that remain inside. To do so, you use lamb's wool attached to a long rod called a sponge. You are the sponger. No reflection on your drinking habits. <laughs> I haven't told you to do anything yet. <laughs> Wait for the command. Advance the sponge. You shall proceed to the side and stand fast to do no more. At the rear of the gun is a vent, a hole drilled down to the breech called the vent is allowing for fusing and firing of the piece. It needs to be sealed to allow no air to be forced through during the sponging and cause embers to be fanned instead of extinguished. You are the vent tender. Which thumb are you going to use to cover the vent? Very wise choice. Tend the vent. Sponge out the piece. Insert the sponge all the way down to the breech. Turn it two times to the left and two times to the Tender still tending the vent to allow no air in during the loading process. We'll now have to pierce that sack of powder that has been placed in to allow for fusing. To do so, a device that is called a pick, brass wire that will not cause a spark, is inserted down the vent hole to pierce the powder charge. Then prime a small tube of powder, much like a musket round without the lead ball, is then pulled out and opened up and poured down the vent hole, creating trail of powder to the powder charge inside or a fuse to the left and to the right the trails will just be physically moved to aim it to the left and to the right the next command alerts the gun crew to stay clear of the wheels and trails that command is make ready on make ready you will take one step to this side and stay right here let me have this for a moment 
This is the firing mechanism called a lint stop. Long handle for a purpose. You want to stay clear of the wheels and trails. Three pounds of cast iron goes that direction. 1,800 pounds of gun and carriage go this direction, six to 10 feet. Clipped into the end of it is a piece of slow match. Rope treated with saltpeter and water, soaked in it and dried. It burns at a constant 1,000 degree temperature, one foot per hour. No open flame around gunpowder. Now this is going to be quick. Make ready is to lower this and fan the embers. Give is bring to that position and fire. Touch the powder charge lightly. Don't bury this in it. It'll just put it out. Stand facing to the front. Grasp it. Your cue is make ready is to plug your ears. It's going to be loud. I'm going to have to remove this glove to keep it covered until we're ready. It's going to be very loud. You need to plug your ears. Cutters, make ready. Fan that ember on the end. Give. Bring it to this point. Fire! <laughs> and we have successfully ignited a cannon. You may extract your gauntlets and return those to the trails. You may keep your earplugs. We don't want them anymore. And you are now a private in the Army. Return to Randy. <laughs> They sell you the wood or not because you go to a place to buy wood and you buy a hundred dollars worth of wood, they don't care anything about hundred dollars worth of wood. It's not worth unstacking a pile of wood for a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do it, see. But they have their preferred customers in the 18th century, just like today. Now, those dollars you keep the money coming in there every year, they'll sell you the best of what comes in. So, like, huh? But today, that you find out from a good well, you sell the quality stuff and just do a case. Yeah. And so, yeah, and some white stuff too, you know, I guess that's one of the advantages of mahogany. It's still available in several sizes. The center panel of this chair back here is one for width, length, and thickness. It's in progress right now. Uh, this thing was done here about 230 years ago. Uh, Cut that out of it. Due to its location, 
It's right here in the center of town, very close to the Capitol building, and very close to any of the merchant shops or craft shops here in Williamsburg. <coughs> it was mostly, though, due to who was coming here. Burgesses were coming here after a day of work at the Capitol building. Naturally, people wanted to overhear their conversations as they discussed politics and things like that. So that's why the tavern was so popular out of all 12 of the taverns. Taverns in the 18th century were regulated by the county. Why do you have to feel it? Yeah. All different kinds of things. Goat hair, horse hair, human hair. In this room with the... Uh this is the, uh, this would be a public accommodation, but the wig maker has set up his Pardon? No traffic. No cars. No. No cars. Mm. There's a barber there. There's Dr. Mackenzie's apothecary there. Look. Apothecary, it's the first time you've said that right yeah. so far. <laughs> oh, no.
Fredericksburg half a mile. Story, that's for sure, Morris. And in fact, if you've got an early commute tomorrow or if you've got to drive it anywhere tomorrow morning, I would allow a little extra time because we are going to see a lot of rain moving into the Washington area. You know it's already hitting your house right now. At least it is in most areas. And we saw the light rain around here in northwest Washington. It has been light so far, but it's going to become moderate to possibly heavy overnight and during the day tomorrow. 74 degrees at National. That's the high today. Dulles hitting 75. At least some of that ragweed is going to get washed out of the air. The count was high today. Holland 22. The air quality in the good range at 40. We'll give you the complete updated radar and let you know when the rain will be ending when we come back.